Hey guys, James MC Reviews here, and man, what an eventful couple of months. In July alone, I got roasted for my Quiet Place review and got into a fight with Deadpool. I definitely need a bit to catch my breath, but first, it's time for my bi-monthly catch-up review, covering all the movies I saw in June and July. Jim Henson, Idea Man, is the new Jim Henson documentary on Disney+, Plus, and it was cute. It was presented very well, and for people who might not be as big into Jim Henson or the Muppets, you might get some insight into his career and life. I do think they kind of skip through a lot and I think you'd be able to get the full picture by watching Defunct Land's miniseries, but this was still good. 3.5 out of 5. In a Violent Nature is directed by Chris Nash and is a typical slasher movie shown from the perspective of the killer, meaning there are a lot of medium shots following behind as he walks through the woods, occasionally followed by a really cool kill. It's basically the Dead by Daylight movie we didn't know we needed. You will either love or hate this movie depending on the audience you see it with. Ours wasn't that big, but they were still laughing a lot during the awkward moments and long stretches of walking, just like we were, so it kind of improved the experience. The concept is really interesting, even if the third act kind of fell apart. I'd still recommend it. 3.5 out of 5. The UFO movie They Don't Want You to See is a free documentary on YouTube that, despite its clickbait title, is surprisingly level-headed and focused more on the science of UFOs and space travel rather than speculation and conspiracy theories. It's not the most impressive movie and it's very low budget, but it's an interesting watch. 3 out of 5. Bruce Almighty was released in 2003 and stars Jim Carrey as a disgruntled news reporter who gets the powers of God and has to learn to be more selfless. Fun fact, I actually watched the sequel, Evan Almighty, before I saw the original. And I'd pretty much describe both movies the same, in that they're fine. The story is kind of mid, the characters work for what's required of them, some of the jokes hit harder than others, and overall, the movie was just alright. 3 out of 5. Bad Boys Ride or Die is the fourth movie in the Bad Boys franchise. I haven't seen the other ones, and I wasn't even planning on seeing this one until this behind-the-scenes clip popped up on Twitter showing Will Smith in this insane-looking camera rig, and I'm like, shit, now I kind of want to see this. The action definitely lives up to what you see in the trailers and behind the scenes. It's very slickly shot with some creative camera angles, although some scenes can be a bit hard to follow. The humor is pretty hit or miss. There are some jokes they run into the ground. The story would probably hit a bit better if I had seen the other ones, but I never found myself confused or unengaged. It was a dumb fun time, 3 out of 5. Surf's Up was released in 2007 by Sony Animation, and it was surprisingly good. I vaguely remember watching this as a kid and not finishing it, but re-watching it now, it's surprisingly pretty funny. It has a unique mockumentary style, the characters all have very memorable personalities, it balances humor with genuine heart, it's a nice hidden gem in the animation world. 3.5 out of 5. Robot Dreams is directed by Pablo Berger and is about a lonely dog living in New York in the 90s who orders a buildable robot to be his best friend. But after being forcefully separated, we follow their individual journeys as they decide whether or not to stay together or move on. I'm glad I got to see this in theaters because the trailers for it looked really good. And it was very charming and poignant. The animation was simple, but very well done. The story was very layered. It was surprisingly not as queer-coded as I thought it would be. You could definitely read elements into it, but it's more a story of friendship and what happens when life moves on. And it balances charm and emotion well enough to where you don't feel whiplash. I definitely recommend this if you haven't seen it yet. 3.5 out of 5. Friends with Benefits was released in 2011 and stars Mila Kunis and Justin Rehab as two friends who try to keep their relationship strictly physical with complicated consequences. This was free on YouTube, so I gave it a watch and... Eh, it wasn't for me. I think the funniest part was that the version I watched was the TV edit, so seeing all the awkward crops and hearing all the bad dubbing gave me a bit of a chuckle. Other than that, it was pretty boring, not that funny, and the characters were kind of annoying. But at least the actors were having fun. 2.5 out of 5. The Watchers is the directorial debut of Ashana Night Shyamalan and is about a girl who gets trapped in a shelter in the middle of the woods with three strangers stalked by these mysterious creatures called Watchers. I was very curious to see what Shyamalan's daughter would make out of this movie, and in a lot of cases, it seems the apple truly doesn't fall far from the tree. There's a lot of really awkward dialogue and clunky exposition, the acting is pretty hit or miss, and while the story starts out kind of intriguing, it completely falls apart towards the end. The visuals weren't anything to write home about, it wasn't the scariest thing I had seen. There were some decent things in there, but they kind of get drowned out by all the negatives. I'd be curious to see more from Ashana as a director, but this wasn't 
exactly the best debut. 2.5 out of 5. The Perks of Being a Wallflower was released in 2012 and is based off the book of the same name and is about a socially awkward high school freshman, played by Logan Lerman, who is guided out of his shell by two seniors. This was really good, but also really rough to watch at times. I don't know how this compares to the book, but it doesn't pull any punches when dealing with some of its more heartbreaking issues. It's not a complete bummer, though. They do interject humor into it that feels natural. All the actors do great and have good rapport off each other. And more than anything, I'd really like to read the book to see how it compares. It definitely won't be for everyone, as, like I said, it can get pretty rough at times, but I'd recommend checking it out. 4 out of 5. Thelma stars June Squibb as a 93-year-old woman who, after getting scammed out of $10,000, goes on a mission to get it back. That's the movie's plot, but that's not what the movie's about. And out of common courtesy, I won't be showing many clips for this one because I want you all to see this as blind as possible. The synopsis makes it sound more comedic than it is, which the movie has funny moments to it, but more than anything, it tries to be a lot more grounded and poignant. And if you take anything away from this movie, it's just please call your grandparents. You never know how long you'll have them. Four out of five. Maxine is the third installment in Ty West's X trilogy and follows Maxine Minx as she's being hunted by a mysterious serial killer while also trying to break into the film industry. I really loved Pearl and X and was really looking forward to this movie. And while I had a great time with it and think it stuck the landing, it was kind of the weakest in the trilogy. It is juggling a lot of story beats and it moves at a breakneck pace that doesn't really allow for much to sink in and be impactful. It does have a great grungy style that stands apart from the other two movies. The performances across the board are great, with Maya Goff and especially Kevin Bacon being standouts. It has a lot of fun kills, it ties into the other films really well. It's not perfect, but it's still a 4 out of 5. Despicable Me 4 is, hey, what a surprise, the fourth movie in the Despicable Me franchise, or sixth if you include the Minion movies. And I'm not gonna lie, a lot of this movie has evaporated from my memory since I saw it, because it is just that forgettable. The story is all over the place with so many subplots that feel like episodes of a Despicable Me TV series. The humor is trying way too hard, and for the most part doesn't really land. None of the characters have anything interesting going on, apart from Gru potentially mentoring a young wannabe villain. And overall, all memes aside, the movie was pretty bad. Two out of five. Twister was released in 1996 and follows a group of storm chasers braving the elements to insert a new revolutionary measuring device into the heart of a tornado. I watched this to prepare for the sequel, which I'll talk about in a minute, and it was a pretty fun time. Obviously, it's got its fair share of dumb moments. In fact, I was watching this with my friend and his brother, and his brother wants to go into meteorology, and he was sat there the entire time pointing out all the scientific inaccuracies, which was pretty funny. Some of the characters arguing can get a bit tiring to watch, but it balances it out with enough fun action and lighthearted moments for it to be tolerable. 3.5 out of 5. Twisters is the sequel starring Glenn Powell and Daisy Edgar Jones, and it's honestly better than the first one. It does repeat a lot of story beats from the first in that it's about a former storm chaser who gets dragged back into the game, and it's another ragtag group of storm chasing internet celebrities versus corporate funded scientists with ulterior motives. But this one ups the ante with a lot more intense action, more imminent danger, but it also has a lot more fleshed out and interesting characters. The guy who outshines everyone is easily Glenn Powell. He is so charismatic and likable, and I'm honestly looking forward to seeing him in more stuff. Like I said, it's a really fun, intense ride, and it's one of the few legacy sequels that actually surpasses the original in terms of quality. 4 out of 5. Long Legs is directed by Osgood Perkins and is about an FBI agent uncovering clues to hunt down a serial killer played by Nicolas Cage and put a stop to his killing spree. I really liked this movie, but not as much as I thought I would. Stylistically, the movie is very well shot and has a creepy, unnerving atmosphere to it. The story is a slow burn that doesn't overdo it with the jump scares, and Nick Cage as the killer is great. It really started to fall apart for me in the third act, which I feel like is a common problem for a lot of horror movies. Whenever it goes into the explanation of the killer's backstory, it can either make or break the movie. And with this, I didn't really like the supernatural angle, and I didn't really like what it 
all built to. I liked the ambiguity of the ending, but I don't think it really earned it. Other than that, I still did like the movie. Four out of five. Kinds of Kindness is directed by Yorgos Lanthimos, and it was kinds of underwhelming. It's split into three different stories, with the same actors playing different characters in each one. There isn't really anything that ties them together, there isn't an overarching theme, there aren't really any events that have an impact or effect on the stories going forward, and it's not like I just don't like anthologies. I really enjoyed French Dispatch, which was basically an anthology. But the difference is, not only was the story a bit more coherent in that movie, but it also felt like it justified being an anthology, where this really doesn't. And I could probably overlook a lot of this if the stories were interesting. And don't get me wrong, the acting from everyone involved is great, and the stories are shot very well, but I just didn't care about what was going on in any of them. It wasn't a bad movie, but it was a frustrating movie, and after Poor Things, I kind of expected better from Yorgos Lanthimos. 3 out of 5. Fly Me to the Moon stars Channing Tatum and Scarlett Johansson and is about a marketing agent who is brought in to help fix NASA's public image at the dawn of the Apollo 11 lunar launch. Then the government, believing the mission is too big to fail, tasks her with filming a fake moon landing as a contingency, and she has to keep the truth from coming out. This movie was really boring. The actors are trying their best, but I didn't resonate with any of the characters, and I didn't really care about what was going on in the story. The story is also full of plot holes and conveniences that just don't make sense. 2.5, probably just skip this. And that does it for this catch-up review. Thank you for watching. Be sure to let me know in the comments what you've been watching. And uh, the beginning of the video wasn't a joke. I'm going to be taking the month of August off so I can relax and reset. But I will still be working on stuff to carry the channel through the end of the year. So be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys real soon.